What is up everybody? Welcome to the video. I've just got off a call with uh, another producer and I'm stepping out of my comfort zone musically. Um, I'm looking forward to doing a different style of track, still in kind of my era of trance or area of trance I should say. Um, but uh, I don't want to give too much away because I'm, I'm kind of reaching in a point where I'd rather just do something and then put it out there rather than saying, oh, big news coming soon and all this shit. So I'm trying to be a bit better at that. Not that I was terrible for it to begin with, but um, so I'll just leave it at that. I won't be clickbaiting and doing all that other bollocks that some people do. Um, but anyway, I'm really looking forward to it. Stepping out of my comfort zone, something I need to do a lot more of. I used to do it a ton many years ago, but I kind of got out of it for one reason or another. Um, but nothing ever grew in a comfort zone, remember that. Anyway, it's time to walk the girl. She's been eyeing me up. I'm sure she's sat behind me somewhere. Oh no, she's just pissed off. She was here just a second ago. Um, so we're gonna do a hike. We were gonna do the Pismo Preserve, but they're, they're always closing it. Because the weather's been shite lately, um, you only have to spit on the preserve and they close it because they say it's too muddy. So we're going to do Sycamore Springs. It's about a 45 minute hike up and down. So let's get to it. I've got a few more things I need to get on with today. So you ready? Let's go. Think I've done this hike so many times. You'd think I'd be used to this uh, this angle. So I would say it's like a 45 degree angle, if not more, in some places, all the way to the top. And then to walk back down doesn't take as long as it takes to get up there. But uh, it's pretty difficult with that incline coming down. But it's great for your knee health. <sighs> anyway. Um, I just have to take my teeth out. I know, gross. Um, so I'm still on the Smile Direct plan. Um, so they needed to make some finer adjustments to my grill. Um, and unfortunately, I'm not gonna show you too much, but uh, <laughs> it's created a gap in my gob, my two front teeth. Um, so I'm hoping that the last two or three aligners are going to uh, are going to close that gap because at the missile, at the at the minute, I'm fucking whistling through it. Um, but that's the update on Smile Direct. It's taken a minute, but uh, it's been so worth it. I look back on my previous videos, and uh, I can tell the difference in my in my teeth straight away. So yes, I'm very pleased with it. Highly recommend. So I was going to this dog park for the longest time near my house and uh, Lucy got attacked a couple months back by two pit bulls and uh, it was probably the worst, one of the worst experiences of my life with something like that. Um, it was fucking horrendous and uh, Lucy held her own, she's really quick and thankfully these two little bastards didn't have a chance to uh, um, to lock onto her neck and tear, the, tear it to pieces. Unfortunately, I, I had to get in there with my boots and kick the fuck out of these two dogs because I was terrified that they were going to kill her. It was that brutal. And then another time, <clears throat> this, uh, this knob comes over with his German Shepherd and uh, this thing's just running like a maniac. And uh, going for Lucy. Now, uh, if you've watched all my other videos and you see my other social media stuff, Lucy doesn't give a shit about anything but her ball and me. And uh, 
I decided to give it a break. Um, it's a shame because there's been some really nice people I've met down there and I really enjoy their company and, and their chats but uh, like everything a couple of people turned out to be dickheads so we stopped and do you know what I prefer going to uh, to hike it's better for me it's better for Lucy and uh, we get to be on our own I get to uh, process life and uh, work on my mental health and uh, get to do some research on music and stuff, listening to podcasts and whatever. So, um, yeah, I'm not disappointed, but uh, I do miss some of the people that went to the dog park. Normally, I wouldn't let my car get as dirty as it is, but the weather's been so off and on, and I hate to keep banging on about the weather, but uh, this is not what I signed up for when I moved to California. The, um, it's been raining on and off for <clears throat> the last couple of months. However, we do need it, but I also want to see some sunshine. I don't know how I dealt with it when I lived in England, but uh, I guess you, uh, you acclimate to your surroundings, and that's exactly what I've done. So anyway, I'm at the UPS store. I've got to take some shorts back that I ordered off Amazon. Um, believe it or not, they're too big. Um, I like my shorts fitted, um, not skin tight, but I like them fitted. But uh, with all these moody websites or these moody um, sellers on eBay, some of their sizes are just huge. So like, uh, I got pretty big legs but the medium is still a little bit floaty. They look like a fair, pair of basketball shorts. So I'm gonna take these back. Um, I remember somebody who used to tell me that uh, I couldn't wear the shorts that I wanted to wear because they were too short, apparently. <sighs> How times have changed. Bore off. Anyway, I'm gonna wear what the fuck I like. So uh, let me get in there. Um, I've got a few other things I need to get on with. Thankfully the weather's turned a little bit. I've had a bit of a costume change. One of my favourite shirts, um, Santa Cruz. Let's get on with it. <sighs> Back home, I've done all my bits for today. I'm a terrible procrastinator and it really pisses me off and I'm really trying to do better at it. I used to have my life, and I've said this in many videos, I used, I used to have my life dialed in with stuff like this. Um, but I'm really trying hard to uh, to sort it out. Anyway, I've got to wait for this download. It's about 1.1 gigs, I think it said, um, from a producer mate of mine that I'm actually doing a, a tune with him. My first official collab that will be a release so I'm really excited for it like I said earlier in the video stepping out of my comfort zone slightly different area of trance um, he's he set up the the track so far um, and now I've just got to have my uh, Solano spin on it so to speak so uh, I'm gonna spend the rest of the afternoon doing this um, if Lucy will not bother me because at the moment I'm putting up with this. She's a good girl. I love this girl. I love this girl. I know. I know. I know. Lunatic. All right. Enough procrastination. Let's get this done. I'm gonna get a cup of tea on the go. Got my notepad, learning to, I can't believe I'm saying this, journal. It's a vile word. I've had it rammed down my neck quite often for the last couple of years by people. 
and I've got to admit, it actually works. So, I got my... So, let me tell you about this. Composition notebook. As a Brit, I don't know if I'm just speaking for myself, but these types of books were seen in all the TV shows and all the movies, and uh, this is what I, I like to do my journals in or any notes that I've got. Keep it all in order. You know, it's the same, uh, it's the same looking book. So uh, it's the uniformity, uniformity, is that a word? It is now. Um, so yeah, it's gonna keep all my in order and allows me to make notes and then I can go back to it. And also it's great for me to look back on and see how far I've come. Because it's it's easy to think, Christ, I've got all this way to go before I'm going to get anywhere. Oh my God! But if you look back on how far you've come, you'll realise how much progression you've actually made. Anyway, enough ball lake. Let's get in on this. Okay, so the title of this video is going to be something like um, People want you to do well, but not better than them. Something like that. <clears throat> so, story time. Many years ago, when I first started mixing, um, I, was, I DJ'd at the very start. I wasn't really into making music as much as I was playing out. Now back then in the early 2000s, it was a little bit easier to be able to DJ in clubs. I feel if you were good enough, um, the market wasn't so saturated. Anyway, I used to buy records. I know I'm that old. From hard to find records and um, chemical records. And those of you that know, will know. Those two record shops are were the record shops in the UK to, to shop at. Anyway, I digress. So, I had a friend of mine who was, basically, he taught me how to, how to mix. And I was learning the 4-4, the four four, counting in bars, phrases, beats, all this other bollocks. And I picked up really well, if I do say so myself. And um, he and I used to go record shopping. We used to DJ all the time. He had a residency at many places and he was an amazing DJ. Don't get me wrong, he was really good. And <clears throat> he gave me a slot at a local pub of ours. And I, I'll never forget playing my first time out. It was amazing. I was so nervous. I could barely get the needle onto the record. Um, but over time, I started to progress and I had a lot of interest from other promoters and lo and behold, I got a small residency at Ministry of Sound in London. Well, that was it. It's, and in his words, the green-eyed monster. Maybe it was the one-eyed purple-headed monster in this case. <laughs> um, but he said he got the green-eyed monster. He got extremely jealous of the attention that I was getting because I was doing well. Before I was doing well, he enjoyed the range, if you like, that we were DJing together on. Um, I was in my lane, he was in his, but the lanes were very close together. It was almost like I, I never strayed outside of uh, of the range that was us as two friends. As soon as I started doing better than him, that was it, our friendship was toast. And it, it was never the same again, and it was a shame because he and I were living out of each other's pockets. We would see each other all the, day, all the time, every day, talking music. It was just such a nerdy friendship, and 
I both love it and still miss it, even now, and this was a long time ago. He tried to reconcile with me, you know, in his own way a couple of times, but it, it was done. I, I just couldn't bring myself to, I don't know, I just couldn't let myself get back into that circle of jealousy again, or, I don't know, basically the, the relationship was bollocks, so. Um, I just didn't want to go back to it and I accepted his around about apology. It wasn't quite an apology, but you know, hey bro, how's it going and all this shit. I'm like, well, okay, if that's your way of kind of um, smoothing things over, that's great and I appreciate it, but uh, I'm not really interested. Fast forward when I got a residency through the same night that I was playing at Ministry of Sound, the promoter was also a DJ and I was doing good and he loved it because I was a great DJ. I, I had a great following. People used to come to the club just to see me, but he also had his following and they would tell him how amazing I was, which was great. And technically it was good for him, but because he was also a DJ, people were talking to him about me more than they were talking to him about himself, if that makes sense. So he started getting jealous of me. And I'll never forget this one night. It was my set, it was my turn on the decks. I had like, I think, it was, let's say it was an hour. I had an hour set and it was the last of the night, which is a bit of a shit set. So typically there would be like a warm up DJ, um, then he would warm up for the main event. Let's say it was, I don't know, Utah Saints or very course or somebody some big name and then I would do the last set the closing set typically after the um, the headliner nobody really wanted to hang out so um, I mean I was I was pleased just to play out but after a while people started staying at the club just to listen to my set because they loved it and I'll never forget this one night, it was my turn, it was probably one of, the, one of the best nights I'd had in a long time, and I was killing it. I'm proud of it, fuck it, I'm gonna say it, I killed it, I was really doing well, it was, I was DJing after Utah Saints, and um, I, could, I was watching him from afar. He was fucking squinting his eyes and kind of like, he wasn't happy. When he should be, because as a promoter, the club was full and I was doing my job. I was entertaining people. But probably, I don't know. I didn't even know if it was, let's say it was 15 minutes in, 20 minutes, 45. Maybe it was the last tune that I had. I don't know. For argument's sake, let's say it was 30 minutes into my set. This ball ache comes into the DJ box and he says, I'm taking over, you're off. And I'm like, you what, mate? He goes, come on, you're getting off. I'm like, what am I gonna do, fight him? I'm like, all right, okay. And then everybody in the crowd was like, what the fuck, why, why is he in off? What's going on? And he was just playing around. And I didn't contest, I didn't say too much about it, I just let it be. Because I knew what was happening. And in a funny way, it was kind of, it was a backhanded compliment because I knew that I was doing well and he didn't like it, so whatever. And people complained to him saying, what the fuck were you playing at? Why did you kick him off, this and that? And uh, a couple days later, um, he didn't call me, he texted me and he kind of apologized for what he did. Didn't know why he did it, again, alluded to the fact that he was, you know, kind of jealous that I was getting a lot of attention on my, on my set. Two instances, right? And I just feel like it's happening again. And I've kept quiet about all my musical stuff, okay? For the last couple of years, I've been really trying hard to pull myself together and fall back in love with music because I fell out of love with everything. Because of the shit that I went through, I just lost interest in everything. And, I, and I've just started to gain it back. And I just feel like there's a couple of people here and there that want me to do well, but not better than them. And it's a shame. Call me paranoid. Call me 
intuitive. Call me what you like, just don't call me late for dinner. But whatever you want to call it, I can just see it a mile off because I've been here quite a few times. Now those are just two times that I spoke about. I've, I've had it before, not just in clubs and music related, but in other instances, like in the workplace, other friends. I'm not saying that I'm this, this amazing person who everybody's fucking jealous of because that's, that's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is what I just said. People are really put out by others' success and it bothers me and it really baffles me as to why can't you just be happy for somebody else doing well? I love it when my friends do well. New businesses or um, I don't know, other DJs and producers doing really well. I love it and I always tell them, good for you, because I don't care what they're doing, because they're not me. I'm, I'm gonna be me, no matter, even if I copied them, and I've, I've spoken about this before, even if I am them, and I, excuse me, even if I copy them, everything that they've ever done, it's still not gonna be the same as how they've done it, because I'm not them. I'm me, and I'm the one who's gonna make it unique. So I don't care what other people are doing. I can get inspired, great, by all means. I, and I do get inspired by other people. Sometimes it's a driving factor to want to do better, to do more, to change the direction slightly, whatever it might be. I just wish people, I just wish some people could be happy for other people. Anyway, that's just what I wanted to say. I've got a lot going on. I don't want to be alluding to the fact that I've got all this stuff coming up soon. I've got all this shit in the works, blah, blah, blah. I've learned that I'm just gonna do it. Because nobody cares about the road there. People just care about the, the end result. Um, nobody cares that I lost thousands of hours of sleep because I went through a traumatic experience and it made me lose my love for everything. People just care about where am I at with what I'm doing. So if I, if I don't tell people what I'm doing, I don't feel the pressure to have to perform and to have this end result. I'm just, my competition is me and that's, that's all that matters. Anyway, enough of that. Have you ever had any, have you had any experience with people being jealous and kind of not rooting for you when you really feel like they should. Let me know, I'd love to hear about it. Anyway, I'm gonna get on. Um, so, that's it. Thank you for listening. Love you, bye. You have a greater purpose than any of us could have ever imagined. Careful who you put your faith in. It might not be her father, but you're someone's. You trust me. Right, we're going to end the video there. We're going to watch the second to last episode of The Last of Us. I don't know if anybody else has seen it, but it's pretty good. The only thing I would say is I hope the next episode has a, has a bit more of those uh, creatures in it because uh, it's getting a bit uh, slack on some of all that. And they concentrate more on storyline, which is great, but um, it kind of the same thing happened with The Walking Dead after a while. But uh, we'll see and uh, the first season is almost over anyway thank you for sticking with me and if you haven't already slap the like button tick or the subscribe and i'll see you in the next video behave yourself yeah.